What is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today I'm reviewing the Nike MC Trainer 2. So three pros that I have with this model is number one, I like the reworked upper construction. So in this model, we have a super breathable mesh through the forefoot and midfoot, and we now have this elastic strap at the bottom of the forefoot. Now, I'm not sure how much this is actually doing for your training, but it doesn't hinder the shoe's overall performance. And if it does help provide extra security for some folks in the lower part of the midfoot, I see that as a positive thing. So I like the reworked upper compared to the regular MC trainer, which I will be comparing to this model later in this video because it has a more lightweight feel to it and it actually feels a little bit more premium in nature compared to the MC trainers upper construction. The second pro that I have with this model is I think it's a pretty good athletic style training shoe for folks on a budget. So this model comes in at $75 USD and if you are somebody who likes to blend like jumping, some jump rope, some heavy lifting, some agility work, and even maybe some short runs and sprint work on a regular basis, this model does a pretty good job at tackling all those demands. The outsole grips the floor pretty well, so whether you're training on rubber gym floors or turf, the shoe does a pretty good job and the overall midsole construction is stable enough to train pretty heavy in this model. Now, it's not going to be your best shoe for maxing out your barbell lifts, but for more recreational lifting, it does a good job. The third pro that I have with this model is that it feels a little bit more flexible than the MC trainer. So one of my big knocks against that first MC trainer was the midsole felt super stiff. And so this model still runs stiffer than other training shoes. However, it is a little bit more maneuverable, so it's easier to break in. This model broke in a lot faster than the MC trainer because the MC trainer's foam just felt so thick. And I think with its overall upper construction, and blend of outsole construction, which are somewhat similar to the shoe, it just gave it a slightly stiffer ride. So I do like that this model feels at least a little bit more mobile than the MC Trainer. It gives you a little bit more articulation in the context of different exercises. But now let's talk about a few cons I have with the MC Trainer 2. Three cons that I have with the MC Trainer 2 is number one, it's tongue construction. So I could see tongue security being an issue in this model for different lifters and athletes. In this model, we have a non-gusseted tongue. It's pretty lightweight and thin, and it's pretty wide. The issue with this is that when you're training or when you're trying to get that tongue to lay flush when putting this model on, it can start to round in a little bit, which is pretty annoying. The Nike Super Rep Go 3 Next Nature Flyknit also had this issue. And so why the MC Trainer 2 suffers from this and why the MC Trainer did not is in the MC Trainer, we had two tongue loops here that sat lower on the tongue. In the MC Trainer 2, we only have one tongue loop and Nike has brought that up. So we have a lot of tongue here that is gonna lack security when you are training and putting this shoe on. The second issue that I have with this model is that it's probably not going to be your best training shoe for daily wear in addition to training. And so why this is, is because when wearing the shoe a little bit looser with its lacing system, I was having some heel slip issues. I think this is due to the low profile boot and the slight lack of flexibility through the shoe's midfoot. When training and tighten the shoe a ton, it wasn't an issue at all. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue that carries over to your training. However, for daily wear, it kind of stinks that this model isn't as versatile as it could be because of this issue. So tread lightly if you're trying to invest in the shoe for both training and daily wear. The third con that I have with this model is that it is not gonna be your best bet for wide feet. So if you have wide feet and if you need more width in your midfoot or toe box, I would say steer clear of this model. It runs pretty narrow and neutral in nature, has that more like athletic fit that Nike often uses in their training shoes. So this is not gonna be the best model for size inclusivity in regard to training. That being said, let's talk about the performance of the MC Trainer 2. So in chatting on the performance of the MC Trainer 2, Two, I'm gonna break this section into a few different parts. I'm gonna talk about lifting, versatile training, shorter runs, and then daily wear. In the context of lifting, I thought this model did a pretty good job, especially considering its price point. So if you're somebody who on a weekly basis needs a shoe for more casual barbell training, some dumbbell and kettlebell work, and some machine work, this model should provide you with a nice level of stability. Now, will this model be your best bet for maxing out your barbell lifts? Not necessarily. The width, I think, is a knock against the shoe's lifting performance, and the stack height is pretty high, so you're obviously not going to want to wear them for like 1RM deadlifts. But if you are somebody who wants to train pretty heavy and also want a shoe that's a little bit more athletic in nature, I think this could be a good option, especially if you're on a budget. When it comes to versatile training, I like this model for two key reasons. Number one, I like the low profile upper and the security that you get with the shoe. It feels very locked in, so when you are training and doing a lot of explosive work or multi-directional work, I never had issues with this upper feeling loose or not secure, so I like this model's upper, which is kind of ironic because when you don't have this shoe fully tightened, you do have slip issues, but when training, the upper I thought did a really good job at being locked down and secure. The second reason why I like this model for more versatile training 
training is I do feel like it has a bit more mobility than the MC trainer. Now, maybe this is placebo, but I do feel like the toe box in this model is a bit more maneuverable. So when you're really cutting into that forefoot and you're trying to explode forward, whether it's with jumping or doing some like skater strides, for example, I thought the shoe did a pretty good job at accommodating that. And with this full rubber outsole, you get a nice level of tread. So for versatile training, the shoe does a pretty good job. So when it comes to shorter runs, this model did an okay job. So if you want them for sprints, short interval work, or even just one to two miles here and there, they'll get the job done. They're not gonna be the most comfortable model for that, but it's not the most uncomfortable ride either. It's just not gonna be the best bet for longer runs. So if you do want them for short runs or sprint work, you can use them for that, and they should perform pretty well. In the context of daily wear, I've already talked on this in the cons, but this is not my favorite model to date. I don't like that you can't wear these a little bit looser. It's a knock against their versatility in my opinion, because sometimes I just like to slip on my training shoes and then go out and about. And because you can't do that in this model, I would say pass on them for daily wear if you're looking into training shoes for both training and rocking out and about. So when it comes to price for the Nike MC Trainer 2, you can expect to pay $75 USD. Honestly, I feel like that price point is pretty fair for lifting versatile training in this shoe and its overall performance and construction. This model does feel a little bit more premium in nature with its upper construction compared to the MC Trainer. So if you can find them for $75 or even better yet on sale for less, I could see this model being a pretty good option for those on a budget. So now let's answer the question, who should invest in the Nike MC Trainer 2? So if you are somebody who has a narrow or neutral width foot and you're looking for a budget-friendly training shoe that you can wear to the gym and just kind of beat up, this is a pretty good model to look into. It's not gonna be super specific for barbell work or for CrossFit, and it's not gonna be the best for wide feet, but honestly, the performance of the MC Trainer 2 I think is a step in a good direction for this model line. I just wish this model was a bit more versatile for daily wear, but when it comes to lifting and versatile training and even some sprint work, the shoe did a pretty good job, especially for more narrow and neutral with feet. When discussing the sizing of the Nike MC Trainer 2, if you have a narrow or neutral width foot, go true to size in this model. The length fits true and the width of the toe box is a bit more neutral in nature. This model's upper volume is pretty low in nature, so if you do have custom orthotics and insoles and narrow and neutral feet, I would actually say you might want to pass on this model. Because of the low profile boot, I could see that being problematic for heel slip. And as already mentioned in this video, if you have wide feet or even flatter feet, especially through the midfoot, I would say pass on this model too. So three differences between the MC Trainer and MC Trainer 2 is number one, their upper constructions. So over here in the MC Trainer, you had a pretty standard mesh throughout. Honestly, it's hard to explain, but the upper in this model does have like a more budget-friendly vibe to it, whereas in the MC Trainer 2, you have a more lightweight mesh. You have this strap down here at the base of the forefoot, and it feels a bit more premium in nature. It's still obviously a budget-friendly shoe, but the upper, I think, just feels like it's a bit more of a high quality. The second difference to denote between these shoes is their overall mobility. So in the MC Trainer 2, and I've mentioned this already, but it might be placebo, I feel like this shoe is a little bit more mobile. It broke in a lot faster than the MC Trainer, and honestly, the MC Trainer still to this date is a little bit thick and clunky, and that was a knock against the shoe that I had because this clunky heel was a pretty big turnoff when performing in this shoe. The third difference between the MC Trainer and MC Trainer 2 is their tongue constructions, and I mentioned this in my cons as well, but in the MC Trainer, you have two tongue loops here. They sit lower on the tongue, and then in the MC Trainer 2, you only have one loop, and Nike brought that up. So you do have some tongue security issues in this model, which is a bummer because this shoe, I think, is a stronger performer and it feels a bit more premium, but you have this tongue construction now that feels like a step backwards. Overall though, those are the big differences between these models. If you're on the fence between the two, I would say just go for the MC Trainer 2. It's gonna perform a little bit better. However, if you are trying to save as much as possible and you have like a, just an absolute sick deal, the MC Trainer is also a pretty good option to look into. So when it comes to the weight, heel, toe drop, and insole in the Nike MC Trainer 2, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 11.10 ounces. This model's heel to toe drop is not disclosed on the product page. When I reached out to the Nike support team, they were not allowed to help. If I had to guess, this model sits around four to six millimeters in regard to its drop. And then when it comes to the insole in this model, this model does not have a removable insole. However, it's only held in with a light adhesive, so you can technically remove it. But with its overall low profile boot, if you have a thicker custom orthotic or insert, I would say pass on this model because even if you remove this insole, I'm not convinced you're gonna have enough boot construction to really lock down your heel. 
All right, so now let's cover the construction of the MC Trainer 2. Up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. It is very similar to the MC Trainer's toe box. It's a pretty thin lip in nature, and honestly, it does an okay job for durability, but I would love to see this widened for future models. Looking at the midsole construction, we have like a medium density foam that wraps the entirety of this midsole, and then we also have a full rubber outsole with some grooves up here in the forefoot for maneuverability, and we have an outsole wrap on the lateral and medial side of this shoe. Looking at the upper construction, we have a synthetic overlay here around the toe box, and then we have a breathable mesh throughout the forefoot and midfoot in this model. The material up here in the forefoot is a little bit lighter in nature compared to the midfoot. We have an elastic strap down here at the base of the forefoot and at the bottom of the midfoot, and then we also have five core eyelets that wrap up, and a pretty thin and lightweight mesh tongue. This tongue, once again, only has one loop. It is sitting a little bit higher than in the MC Trainer, and then we also have some Just Do It branding here on the front of the tongue as well. Looking at the heel of this model, we have some Nike branding back here on the lateral heel, and then the boot itself has a nice level of structure, so outside of it having that slip issue for casual wear, when training, I do like this boot's security. This boot is kind of contrarian in nature, honestly, in regard to its overall security. Once again, this model does not have a removable insole. However, this insole is only held in with a light adhesive. If you have additional questions on the MC Trainer 2's construction, drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Nike MC Trainer 2. There's a lot to like about this model, but then there are also a couple of things where it just kind of has me scratching my head asking Nike why. If you have additional questions on the MC Trainer 2, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.